Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, have you ever thought about how typewriters reverse the ribbon? Yeah, manual typewriters, almost all of them, have a ribbon reversing system. And maybe you never thought about it much, but there's at least four, maybe five different methods that manufacturers have used over the years to reverse the ribbon on a typewriter. And I thought it might be kind of interesting to delve a little bit into how that works. So stay tuned. Well, of course, before typewriters uh, design became standardized into the form that we're well familiar with, there were a lot of early typewriter designs that used a whole plethora of different methods for managing the ribbon, and we won't really cover those right now. We're going to cover just the main standard ways that manufacturers do use to reverse the ribbon. Well, the first reversing method that you're probably most familiar with is what I would call the eyelet method. Here we have crimped eyelets near both ends of the ribbon, roughly six inches from the end, and it uses a pivoting forked guide that the ribbon threads through, and the fork in the guide is too narrow for the eyelet to pass through, so as the ribbon is moved by the typing action, the eyelet touches the guide and causes the guide to flip over, which changes the direction of the ribbon. Let's look at one of the service manuals and see how that happens in detail. So this is an example of the eyelet method in a Smith Corona 5 series. This is out of the uh, floating shift typewriter repair Bible that Ted Monk sells. Uh, so this illustration shows you the forked guides, the one here, and there's one over here. The ribbon threads through it. And then if we look underneath the machine, we see this shaft here that drives either ribbon spool gets kicked either left or right based on the action of the eyelet on that movable guide. And here's a Smith Corona Silent Super itself. And you can see on the right side this guide gets angled toward the left when the eyelet pushes it. And conversely, on the left spool, the forked guide that gets pivoted to the right by the eyelet as the ribbon is pulled to the right at the end. And underneath the machine, so these two cogs are the spools that get driven, the ribbon spools, and there is this shaft here that kicks either left or right. So if it kicks left, as it turns, it's going to drive the left spool. The right one will then be the uh, supply side spool at free wheels. Um, conversely, if it gets kicked to the right, then it's going to drive the right hand spool and the left hand one is going to be the supply side spool. But the kicking action, whether it goes left or right, it happens by means of that forked guide back in there tripping these levers and causing this action to happen. Even though the eyelet method ended up being the most common ribbon reversing system, there was really a lot of royal standard typewriters in the early half of the 20th century that didn't use eyelets. The royal standard method used a auto ribbon spool trip lever that's built into the center hub of both left and right hand ribbon spools and it works by actuation when you get to the very end of the ribbon the slack of the ribbon on the center of the spool causes this little tripping lever to fall down and underneath the spool mechanism it trips the reversing action. Let's take a little bit of look at that from one of the typewriter repair bibles. Here in the center of the ribbon spool itself is the auto ribbon spool trip. It's a little angled bracket. It's a little bit less than 90 degrees as you see here. If the ribbon is tightly wound around the spool, this vertical part of the auto ribbon spool trip will be up here parallel pinched against the center hub, which means the little pointed arm is raised up high enough that it doesn't uh, interfere with any other parts. But as soon as the ribbon gets to the end and, this, and the tension on the ribbon slackens sufficiently, this arm falls down and this end of the auto ribbon spool trip arm falls down enough to interfere with this whole bracket here which is the automatic reversing arm, and it causes the automatic reversing arm to tilt rearward, which activates all this mechanism to reverse the ribbon. And we'll see here, we'll lift up the left-hand ribbon spool on the KMM, and you might be able to see now this little arm right here 
is lifted up out of the way because of the tension of the ribbon currently, but when you get on the, to the end of the ribbon, this will fall down sufficiently to interfere with the reversing arm, which is right here. And that action will trigger the reversing. And so these are dedicated royal spools that have this reversing arm mechanism built in. And so you obviously need to use these kind of spools with a royal standard machine. So the next kind of reversing system that I've seen, most commonly I see it on my Groma Calibri. I think the German-made Triumph Norm 6 may also use this same method, but it's basically there is a ribbon guide arm that keeps the ribbon pack pressed tightly together. The angle of that arm relative to the center hub of the spool will trip the reversing action. When the uh, spool gets down toward the end of the ribbon, that arm has moved in far enough toward the middle of the, the spool hub that it trips the reversing action. And so to take a look at that, I don't have a drawing and a manual for how that works. So let's take the little Groma Calibri, put it on a towel, flip it upside down, take the bottom off and examine how that actually works. This is the so-called Groma Calibri reversing method. You'll notice this spring-loaded arm that serves one purpose to keep the uh, ribbon tightly packed into the spool so it doesn't unspool itself. There's a lot of typewriters that have these particular spring-loaded arms, like for instance Olympia SMs do, but this particular arm not only serves to keep the ribbon tightly packed together, but you notice it's attached to a shaft or a pin, and as this thing moves in or out based on the diameter of the ribbon pack at any one time, it actually rotates this shaft. You notice there's a little set screw that attaches it to it, and it's rotating that shaft underneath the machine. This right here is how it rotates. When it rotates far enough in, so this raised part is far enough in, it interferes with this cog right here of the ribbon rotation shaft and that will trip the ribbon rotation by sliding this uh, shaft sideways which reverses the ribbon direction. Now in order to adjust this particular tripping action I've had to uh, do slight reforming or bending of this vertical arm here to uh, match the diameter of the ribbon pack and you have to do it on both sides. There's, an, there's a similar mechanism on the right side as well. The next auto-reversing method I call the Olympia method, and that is it relies upon ribbon tension. When the ribbon gets down to the end, as the drive system tries to advance the ribbon, but the ribbon can't turn anymore, the tension on the ribbon increases, and that causes the forked guide to flip over to the other side. Uh, this method actually ends up working with or without an eyelet. In fact, my wife's SM3 has an eyelet-style ribbon, and it still operates properly, but it's not using the standard eyelet method of the eyelet pushing the guide sideways. It's really Really using ribbon tension to flip the guide forward or backwards. Let's take a look at that. So I'm very close to the uh, left end of the ribbon. By the way, this does have the uh, little spring-loaded arm like you saw on the Calibri, but this particular arm, all it serves to do is keep the ribbon tightly packed together. It doesn't actually actuate anything by the rotation of it. The reversing action happens as you're typing, you notice it's turning. The ribbon's going to get tight due to the, getting it to the end of the ribbon, and that's going to cause the guide to flip forward. So there's two guides, one on either side, and they go backwards and forwards. And it's actuated by ribbon tension, not by an eyelet. I do happen to have an eyelet in this particular ribbon, but it's not actually the eyelet itself that's tripping it. It's the tension of the ribbon coming to the end of the ribbon. It flips it forward. A standard eyelet style reversing system, the arm moves laterally when it trips instead of forward or backward. So you see there's a slight angle caused by the ribbon between the vibrator to this forked guide and to the ribbon pack. And as the ribbon gets tight at the end, that angle flips it like that, caused by the tension of the ribbon. And the ribbon reversing is actuated by these parts right here that are spring-loaded. 
Now there may be some other Arcane ribbon auto-reversing systems that I'm missing here. I think I've covered all of the various ones from my personal collection, but there is one more method of reversing the ribbon I should mention, which is the manual method. Not every typewriter has a knob or lever dedicated for this, but some, or a lot of typewriters did, especially in the earlier half of the 20th century. The manual method, a lever that you can push or pull or whatever, and it will reverse the ribbon. Here's an example of manual ribbon reverse. Now this Underwood Portable does have the automatics with the uh, eyelet style with these guides up here, but you can manually reverse it with this lever here on the right side of the machine so it flips between forward and backwards to drive either ribbon. And then if you twist the knob, it'll actually move or advance the ribbon manually like that. And it uses a drive shaft underneath the machine similar to the Calibri and the Smith Corona Silent Super uh, 5 Series uh, to do that. You're just flipping that thing manually like that. What's interesting about ribbon reversing systems is if you have a sizable typewriter collection you might find yourself swapping ribbons back and forth between various machines. Maybe you're testing the differences between silk, nylon, and cotton ribbons, for instance. Some of your machines, like your big Royal Standards, don't use eyelets, and in fact, if you have an eyelet-style ribbon, it'll jam the eyelet up inside the ribbon vibrator and hang up the machine. So you don't want, you have, probably have to cut the eyelet or cut the ribbon short if it's an eyelet-style ribbon. On the other hand, if you have a ribbon coming out of a Royal Standard and you want to put it into an eyelet style typewriter, you're going to have to crimp on an eyelet uh, to make it work for that machine or tie a knot in it. That's the other alternative way of doing it, of course. Not every typewriter has the same method of ribbon reversing. We may not notice this until we start to play around with our collection of typewriters and notice this in more detail. Anyways, I thought this was a little bit of an informational video you guys might find interesting. Ribbon reversing systems on typewriters can be troublesome. This is one of the things that makes typewriters either usable or very irritating to use is when you come to the end of the ribbon and as you're typing you all of a sudden notice that the imprint is starting to dry out and you have to manually open up the ribbon cover perhaps and flip the lever and reverse it yourself and maybe wind it on a little bit to get to the fresh ribbon. It can be very frustrating and this is one of the areas where it's really helpful to do some thorough degreasing and lubrication on that ribbon reversing system. And then the real trick is when you do try to service your ribbon reversing system is you want to test it. And there's no better way to test it than to repeatedly type to the end of the ribbon and then watch it reverse. And what you have to do to make this a little more efficient is spin the ribbon manually until you get close to that end of the ribbon, then do some typing and see if it reverses. And then you gotta spin it all the way back to the other end, type and test that one, and then spin it all the way to the other end and do it again several times to make sure that it is reliable. So it can take some time and a little bit of patience to test out the ribbon reversing system even after you've done some maintenance on it, but it's well worth it. Once you get the ribbon reversing fixed, it makes the typewriters a lot less trouble prone and less irritating to use. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve. I thought this would be an interesting little video on ribbon reversing systems in manual typewriters. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a note down below if you will, and until next time, stay creative, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.